Morning, Mike. Good to see you. On the phone, you had told me a little bit about uh, some of these cover crops. You still yeah. stick into uh, that program? Uh, deer degradation from year to year has been a problem for us as a farm. There's multiple deer here. Can you see the one right underneath us? Yeah. Okay. Let's get her. Work, work, work time here at the Grigsby, and it's time to start taking some of these does out for the degradation permits that the state of Illinois has issued to the farm. Got one savage up here. Um, gonna get her sighted in. It's a 270. Need to make one quick adjustment here. But we're pretty much on. We are sighted in, ready to kill some doves. Well, we're going to go out. we got a little bit of daylight left. We've been working hard, doing a bunch of stuff here on the farm, but we're going to try to get a few of these does killed. We were checking crops today, and Randy Lika, the farm manager, was showing us some of the bean fields are just absolutely getting destroyed. So I told him we'd focus these doe tags that the state has issued on these bean fields for them to try to help out, because it is pretty dang bad. We've been doing this the last couple of years. It really helps out with some of the crop degradation that they have you here at the farm. It also helps us with our doe management because it gives us the ability to kill a few extra deer and keep our ratios a little bit closer anyway. So we're just gonna ease up and down this road here and see if we can't make a farm manager happy. Can you see the one right underneath us? Yeah. Okay. Let's get her. We got her. We just snuck up here on top of this hill, looking down on these beans, and these deer are just destroying them. I know the farm will be happy that we killed one of their bean eaters, but the nice thing about that doe is we've watched her for a long time. She doesn't have a fawn, so that's, that's cool. Try to get these old barren does off. I mean, that's a big old doe. Sit here a minute and make sure that's it. But time to get the wrapped razor knife out, get her gutted up, throw her in her truck, see if we can't go find one more maybe. If we can, action's clear. I'm just bolting over, safety's on. Uh, if we can find another one, we'll go ahead and try to get another one. Another doe just walked out. Perfect. It did go over? Mm -hmm. Huh. If she stops, I'll just put it right on her and let it eat. We still on her. Why is she wagging her tail like that? She just fell down. Gun's clear. Two does, same spot. Worked out perfect. That one ran like I might have missed her, I thought, for a second. I was like, oh, the, the savage is on. But I didn't. She just ran a little bit and then piled up. Both those does don't have fawns, which is awesome. 
and then we don't have to worry about that. But we've got to get some of these deer out of here. There's just so many deer on the grease we farm and they're just destroying crops. Um, so, you know, these are crop degradation tags. That's what makes it legal to be able to do this. They issue the farm 10 antlerless tags or 10 tags, deer tags, and then per farm. But because the Griggs be so big, it's one for each county because the county line kind of splits our property in half. So it's, we, we can take 20 and it helps the farm. It helps us from a management standpoint too because we're able to get our antlerless numbers up because as non-residents, we can only shoot but a couple. So here's the deal. I got two deer to go get the raptor razor out and gut real quick, take them down to the processor. This is the coolest part about this is we're gonna donate all this meat to the local soup kitchen. Cast Meats processor here locally that we use does a great job and they take care of facilitating that for us. So we're gonna go gut these deer and then we're gonna take them down to Cast Meats and some uh, less fortunate folks are gonna have some good eating out of this too. So good story all the way around. It's good for the farm, it's good for the, the crops, it's good for our deer management, and it's good for some people that are hungry. If you have not seen Raptor Razor Knife, um, <laughs> this is the way to go. T-handle design, um, you've got two different type of blades, so more of a skinning setup, <clears throat> and then the gut hook and Hulu where you can literally cut as you go down and grab it with the gut hook and pull. But having that T-handle, man, you can grab it and I can walk right to the end of the deer on it. I love these things. They're replaceable blades, so you just pop them off and put a fresh set on. Well, we are back at uh, the uh, organic field here that we started a couple weeks ago. We came out here when you guys were actually, you had a new toy out here, ripping up some of the ground and working this up. And you started that story. You know, we want to keep, as the season goes on, keep telling the progress of what you're doing with this field and why you're doing it and the methods and all those things. So kind of, it's green now. What happened? It's green, Mike, I, I tell you. We couldn't have planned this any better. I'm smiling from ear to ear when I come out and see this. We've just hit this perfect. I think as you can tell when you look out across there and you know, this is just newly emerged, but look at the evenness of that stand. Yep. And not only that, but as we said, this is an eight way mix. What we're trying to do here is ramp up microbial activity. Okay. Uh, so we're trying to stimulate our soil health. And there's a symbiotic relationship between these plants the roots and the sugars they exclude through the roots that feed the, mi the microbes. Okay. So the more diversity that we have here, the more diversity we get in microbes. What we'll be able to tell is a little as this stuff starts getting bigger and the different growth rates is we're gonna be able to identify each species that's out of here. Yep. Show the different plant structure, the rooting structure, and uh, just generally the kind of biomass that can be created with this kind of seeding. All I can say is that as you convert more and more fields to organic, you know, if you're going to be planting stuff like this, put some of it close to the timber. Right. <laughs> well, and I think what we're doing, we're, we're just uh, increasing the holding capacity. Uh, oh, for the, car the carrying capacity of this property tail, goes up. But th this is going to be very upland game sure. beneficial as well. Yeah, and rabbits, we'll, birds, you know, your quail, yeah, your pheasants, yeah, all that it's stuff. It's comprehensive. Yep. So Absolutely. I think we'll be able to see that in uh, future visits. Probably have some geese landing in this thing too. You never know. <laughs> you never Very good. Well, let's, uh, you want to move on and, and let's cover a few more of the cover crops because I know you did clover, yeah, I've right? Yeah, i got another one just down the road here that, again, uh, it's a whole different approach. Uh, it's something we're going to try to scale to more acres. And, and again, we've just had great success. So uh, on our way down the road, I'd like to stop. And yeah, let's take a look at what it. we got going. Okay, on. very good. So we're in another field that you planted with a cover crop. But this is a totally different method. This is, has nothing to do with the organic field over there. That's this right. is a different practice altogether. So if you can break it down, this was wheat that you cut yep. in July? Yeah, it, this, uh, I think the wheat was taken out late June, very okay. early, maybe July 2nd, somewhere okay. around there. Uh, so we took the grain off. Uh, we let it sit fallow for a period of time, waiting for the time to be right. 
uh, for the cover crop. So you don't want to be too early. That July time frame establishing covers is a really weather sensitive area. It's generally hot and dry. Yeah. Much like the other field we were talking about, I think we hit this just right weather. -wise. There's plenty of moisture in this soil. You yeah, can you can see the moisture down yeah, there's here. And, and uh, it's hard to detect, but we're getting good emergence of the Balancia clover. So that's the cover crop. And then you'll see some oats here that is a little bit easier to row. That's what we refer to did as you, the nurse crop. Did you, uh, did you drill everything in so everything's rowed, yep. even the clover? Yeah, we used a John Deere 750 no-till drill. Okay. And we just went into the standing wheat stubble and drilled it in seven and a half inch row spacing. What's the advantage to having all this stubble here? Well, the advantage is we really believe in the no-till uh, planting system. We're trying to minimize soil disturbance. We like to uh, leave residue on the top. It's very wildlife friendly, but it's also very soil health friendly. So what we're trying to do again is drive soil health and by minimizing soil disturbance, it really uh, aids in that. Um, so uh, this, the whole thought process behind this is we want something growing year round. So okay. my, my hope and goal for this fall is that we'll get the ground covered green. We'll be able to just from the road tell that it's planted to right. clover, but we're not gonna get a lot of height to this crop, but we're gonna have a living plant there that uh, is going to help uh, our microbe population. This nurse crop and, and cover crop is going to be followed by corn next spring. Okay. So by planting clover, that's a nitrogen fixing crop. So we're actually generating nitrogen uh, for next year's corn crop. Gotcha. And it comes to us free. There you go. <laughs> right. So so that's going to reduce the amount of commercial fertilizer that we'll have to add. To and that's the economic crop. benefits of doing it, this. It's one of the paybacks that we get. Sure. Obviously, we've got a little investment in getting the cover established, the seed the equipment cost, but it all comes back to us and what this plant can do in fixing sure. nitrogen. In the soil. And for me, I've got an 80 acre field of clover, so the deer are going to, yeah, uh, it's great. You, you'd be spending money to get this done. That's right. doing it free gratis for And us. this field is a good one because there's timber around the edge of this field, so we'll be hunting the heck out of this. Let's go up and let's check the, the red corn patch. Okay. Uh, last time we were there, the deer had done some work on it.